What's poppin' with it, fam, bam? You already know what the fuck it is. It's your motherfucking boy Jokes. Put it down for that brown side. East Town Records. You know what the fuck it is, man. Come on now. Stop playing with me. Um, I started, when I first started doing this shit, it was up in the high desert, man. In Spirit, California. I was in high school. Sultana High School. And, uh, my homie's homie, he was rapping. And he was rapping out the same apartment complex that I was living in. And I just remember watching him, because I've always been a fan of music, man, since I was a little kid. Like, uh... Tuesdays, Tuesdays used to be the days that album would albums would drop and I'd go steal money like I steal money out my dad's girlfriend's purse or whatever I had to do just to go buy music like motherfuckers would steal that and go flip it I'd go steal it and buy some music like so anyways fast forward like the homie was doing music and um, I just saw this like man somebody you know what I mean somebody that's in my same area is printing up CDs and putting them out and people are buying them and people are loving it and he's doing shows like it was nothing big like compared to what we're doing how we're doing it but it just gave me hope, like, this is possible, you know what I mean? It's something that's very possible to do, you know what I mean? A lot of people look at it as like, man, how many people make it in the music business? How many people, you know what I mean? It's damn near impossible, like winning the lottery almost, and you know what I mean? But shh, I got my scratcher. We ain't won, the, we ain't won, the, we ain't won the, the lottery yet, you know what I mean? We ain't platinum yet, but we, we got the scratcher. We got the fucking, we got the little $5,000, you know what I mean? We're going to take over the world, though. Just wait. It's all, it, it's all part of the plan. When it came to uh, music that I would buy, man, like I can't even say that I had a specific person that I would listen to because it just came down to uh, whoever was out that week. If there was a new album dropping, then I'd go cop that. If I wasn't fucking with it, then I listened to it. I could say I heard it. But um, just music in general, a lot of R and B, man. I know, I know, you know what I mean. Uh, a lot of people, you know, what I mean, hip hop heads and shit like that. But I, I was really, really into R and B. And it just came from, you know what I mean? When a lot of people can rap. My dad used to bust flows, you know what I mean? He'd get drunk and he, he'd be sipping his 40 and doing whatever and he'd start busting flows and he used to tell me, if I could do it, why can't you do it? Like, that's cool, but I always looked at it like, anybody could be a rapper, but when it comes to singing, like, it's just a different thing. So I would sit there and listen to, you know what I mean, Trey songs or Mario or, you know what I mean? All them motherfuckers from like the 2000s, like just listen to their music and be like, man. And when I first, I remember when I, when I did one of my first songs, uh, I tried to get a singer. I tried to get a singer on it, and I couldn't. And I couldn't find nobody like around my my high school that that was comfortable enough to come and and do a a, a singing section on my song. So I was just like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna just do it." You know what I mean? But that's where the inspiration came from. Was just listening to a lot of R and B, and um, just practice makes perfect. Everybody want to say like, "Oh, you gotta be born with it." Nah, hey, go listen to my old shit. Go to SoundCloud, listen to my old shit, cause it don't sound like it. It don't sound like it sounds right now. By the way, Boss Bitch is available right now on YouTube. You gotta go check that shit out, rapping and singing. You know what I mean? <laughs> <clears throat> Boss Bitch is a very, very special record to me, man. Like, um, right when, right when I got put on Brownside, I was going through a lot. You know what I mean? I didn't really have a steady spot to stay. I was kind of just everywhere and. Uh, I remember uh, me and my grandma, we were, we were staying at the motel, and I get a call from, I get a call from uh, the man with no face, Big Lou, and he was like, I answered the phone, and right when I said hello, he was like, boss bitch. I was like, what? He was like, boss bitch. What are you talking about? That's the song. I want a song about a boss bitch. I was like, okay, let's try to get it going. Let's get a beat cracking. A week passes by. We go to Tokes' spot. Tokes comes up. We we right away we go to the kitchen right when uh right when we got there. That's where uh the same spot that uh Vario Chronicles was written, the same spot that uh, uh Last of a Dying Breed was written, we sat there and we wrote Boss Bitch. And I remember him putting that that beat, I'm not even gonna lie, like we skipped right past it. And then he's like, nah 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 nah. Hey, go back. What was that? He plays it again. A couple people in the room were like, nah, that's not it. And Tokes was like, nah, that's it. Couple more people, nah, that's not it. Nah, that's it. Hey, jokes, can you fuck with it? I was like, yeah, man, let's do it. That's it right there. If you say that's it, that's it. So we play it. He, he came, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. He, he told me, that's why he would say he wasn't gonna charge writer's credit. Uh, he said, she stays right by my side. But he said, baby, I changed it to shorty. He said, baby's always down to ride. She's my boss bitch. Boss bitch, and then I added the baby, and then the fucking rest is history, man. We went and fucking uh, we went and recorded that probably about a week later. I left back home, came back, and uh, we recorded that in uh, I believe Rosarito, Rosarito, Mexico. We recorded that song, and the rest is history, man. Go check that shit out on YouTube right now. It's banging. 
you always got to give credit where credit's due, man. So salute to uh, Big Hutch for that beat. You know what I mean? Um, Tokes had that shit sitting in his CD collection for a cool minute. I remember him telling me that shit. He's like, I had this one sitting for a cool minute. I don't know who is going to fuck with it. But it all happens for a reason. So salute to Big Hutch. Uh, Joaquin the Doc Lopez out there in fucking Mexico, man. I appreciate your time. That shit was a beautiful, one of, if not the most memorable session that I've ever had, man. It was the one time that I got to sit down and uh, be in the studio with Big Tokes. You know what I mean? We sat there and... He was the one, the one, the, one of the lines was, uh, flossing on you fools and not giving a fuck. I said, uh, I said, uh, flossing on these bitches, not giving a fuck. And then he paused me. He's like, hey, homie, we flossing on these fools, homie. We flossing on these fools. We ain't flossing on no bitches. She, if she's a boss bitch, she gonna floss on the fools. I'm like, all right. Hey, that makes sense. Yeah, that ride the back. Hey, let me do that again. And that's where it came from. But hey, salute to, uh, Big Hutch for the beat. Uh, Joaquin the Doc Lopez, man, and my, of course, you know what I mean, my late great homie fucking Toker from Brownside, man, we made that shit happen, and Big Lou for the concept, salute Big Lou, man. See, it's funny that you bring up that video, man, because that was the day, that was the exact day that we wrote Boss Bitch, that was the same exact day that we wrote Boss Bitch, and right when, right when we were done with it, uh, he hops up on the Toker show, and of course, he always told everybody, this motherfucker, man, he always told everybody, don't be putting your shit out there like that. Don't be sharing it. Don't be telling motherfucker. But he'd be the first one to do it. Motherfucker always be sharing the shit. He always be playing it nonstop, always playing it in the background. Like, that's what it was, man. And he was just like, hey, jokes, hop up on this motherfucker. Show him a little preview of it. And I had only wrote, I had only written, I think, about like six bars to the first verse. And he was like, just give him a little preview. And that's why you can see in the video, he's like, woo! Like, just stop. That's enough. And it's cool that he told me to stop because I did not have it memorized at the time. So I had to be like, I was even going to start to fuck up. So he stopped me at the perfect time. But that video means a lot to me, man. You could just see. If you guys watch closely, watch that video. Because when I start rapping, that full smile just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, it's, the fuck, it's a great feeling because I could see him just, his faith in me growing as I spit that verse. Because he had never heard that. Before I spit it right there, he had never heard what I had for a verse. So... Yeah, man, that's a that's a memorable. That's 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 something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Um, I remember him telling me, him referring to Tokes when uh when he told me you need to come up with a concept for your album. Not even so much a concept, just a name. You know what I mean? And I wanted it to mean something. <clears throat> I remember we were going. I went to the bank. I think my girl was cashing a check or something, and uh, we were waiting in the parking lot. And uh, she came out. She opens the door. I was like. Nothing funny because my name they call me jokes. So like they call me jokes, but nothing's funny So it all oh, she's like that's dope. I was like I gotta text Tokes. So I texted Tokes and that's what I that's why I debuted the uh, the promo cover for it uh, And I was like hey Tokes, what you think man? Like my name's jokes. I'm gonna call my album nothing funny like he's like oh hell Yeah, like he was gassed on it, man, and this is probably <clears throat> not even on a uh, because I like making songs that, that, that are catchy, songs songs that, that hit, you know what I mean? Songs that people, not, not so much that have to do with me in particular, but that just work. So, um, this song, this, this album is going to be a lot of that, but it's coming from aspects that Tope, uh, concepts that Topes gave me or concepts that we came up with together. And there's, and I remember uh, telling him, because I put out two albums previously with my last record label and uh there were it was a lot of auto tune you know what i mean and not to say that i don't like the way my voice sounds on auto tune because the homie uh he always made me sound right to where you could barely tell but i just want my own talent to uh just to fly i want to flex on this one you know what i mean so there's no uh, there's no there's i'm not gonna say there's no auto tune but most of my songs there's probably one song one song that's got auto tune so uh, damn near every fucking song on that uh, is is you're getting my 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 pure talent. You guys are getting exactly what I can do without having any type of mechanics put into it or anything. It, it means coming straight from me and coming from concepts that mean a lot to me. So, just overall, man, this this album is gonna be something that I can say it, I, I will be proud of because uh, that was my biggest uh, that was my biggest problem with the last projects that I put out I, I I wasn't happy with it because it came from somebody else's perspective or it came from something that I couldn't relate to just somebody gave me an idea for it all of these songs came from real life experiences whether it's smoking and chilling or you know what I mean uh losing a loved one or uh uh relationship shit you know what I mean you get a little bit of everything on there real life shit everything man I, I think there's something on there for everybody and it drops april 19th man april 19th nothing funny east town records brown side y'all wait for it man the feature's gonna be ridiculous we gonna talk about that too <laughs> see man coming up i've been doing music 
this year marks 10 years. You know what I mean? I've been doing this since high school. And uh, I remember putting out my little songs on fucking uh, on uh, SoundCloud or whatever when nobody knew who the fuck I was. And I was just rapping for my homies. I'd, get, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd have 50 plays. And I'd be like, oh, I did it. Oh, man, they fucking with it. Like, yeah, that's it. But... You know, in reality, <laughs> I was probably one of the, I was probably most of those 50 plays because I listened to it about 30 times before I go to sleep. So, you know, what I mean, it was, but I, I built off small wins, man. And the fact that this song has been the boss bitch was promoted from around this same time last year. You know, what I mean, April up until now. And people were still so ten thousand views in a day, man. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. That's that's a blessing. That's a that's a total blessing. And I know it's cause that man up there. And I know it's cause you know what I mean. He had faith in it. He knew what the fuck was gonna happen. He knew what was gonna happen when it dropped. And I just I was so iffy on it. Like man, we we, we were promoting it too much. We're not nah. That just built up the whole anticipation for it. Cause it's still building, man. I think we had twenty thousand views right now. Twenty thousand views in two weeks. That's what. Uh, almost two weeks. It ain't even been two weeks. Almost two weeks. That's twenty thousand. That's twenty. That's ten thousand views a week, man. That's a, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. I don't look at it as nothing. Nothing small. You know what I mean? We build off small wins around here, and that ain't small. So it's a blessing. You know what I mean? It's a blessing. That boss bitch video is a fucking. It's a thing. You need to go check that shit. I'm gonna keep saying it. Go check that shit out right now. <laughs> so check it out, man. This, like I said, not only because of how. I'm putting the album together, like I said, no auto-tune, a lot of shit like that, and just concepts that mean a lot. The features on this album are mind-blowing to me, because a lot of these cats that I got up on here are people that I've been fans of for a long time, man, a long time. The only reason I got my glasses down, I'm rolling the blunt right now, you know what I mean? You need to know that. But, um, yeah, it's just a blessing, man. Uh, I just went and did the... Uh, the uh, Baby Bash show on February 9th. Salute to the homie for getting that motherfucking dope footage. You know what I mean? But uh, we just did the Baby Bash show on February 9th. We locked in that feature. Uh, she Don't Want It. It's going to be a sexy little fucking song for all you little females out there that try and make babies to my music. That's all I want to know. Hey, besides that too, I need somebody to DM me as soon as y'all make a baby to my music. Just let me know. Just let me know that I was in the bedroom and that was the cause of it. Like, that's going to be a beautiful thing. But, mm -hmm. yeah, me and Bash got something coming, man, for, for you know what I mean? For them love making, the love making type track. It's, it's beautiful. And uh, on top of that, we got Lil Tokes. You know what I mean? Salute to my little homie. We got something real special coming for you guys, man, real soon. That's going to be the next single that you guys get. Uh, we'll speak a little bit about that later, but uh, yeah, man, Lil Toke's going to be on the album. Evelyn G going to be on the album. Uh, salute to YB. YBE going to be on the album. Um, fuck up, Comandante Tres going to be on the album. Salute to the homeboy Cujo. Cujo going to be on the album. Uh, production from Misfit Soto. Uh, Alex Ibarra, you know what I mean? That's a big one right there. Me and Alex Ibarra been trying to get some crack for a cool minute. Salute to the homie for for producing a record that means so much to me, man. Uh, Rich G, me and Rich G are are, are in a, a, a talks right now. Ooh, you got that bomb on, nigga, what's up, what's up with it? Hey. Yeah, we in talks right now, making some shit crack. Uh, beautiful song, beautiful song. It's totally his stilo. Right when I heard the beat, I knew it was his stilo. Um, fuck else, Mr. Shadow, I got Mr. Shadow on the album. Uh, just, man, just a lot of people that I grew up listening to that, 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 it's mind-blowing to me. It's mind-blowing to me that I have these features on my album right now, but that's what just makes this thing so much more special, and I know you guys are going to fuck with it. You know what I mean? Nothing funny. 2019, these features going to be ridiculous. <laughs> I could talk, talk about that all day. Man, so check this out. This is how it all went down, man. Uh, I did a record called uh, In My Hood with the Empire Writers. Uh, banging ass track. That's probably one of my favorite records because it wasn't fully written by me, you know what I mean? Like I added my own little flavor to it. But um anyway, fast forward, you know what I mean? The homeboy Big Sanch that was a part of the Empire Writers, uh, he invited me to his pad, uh, to go, you know what I mean, record some record some records. And uh I was sipping, you know what I mean? I had to go outside, smoke my little cigarette or whatever. I went outside, started smoking my cigarette, and he came outside with me, we we're just chopping it up. He's like, So what's your situation right now, homie? I was like, man. Honestly, like, I'm just doing me, you know what I mean? I'm just making my connections where I can and just doing what I can to progress this shit. And he's like, uh, you ever heard of Brown Side? Like, yeah, I heard of Brown Side. What do you mean I heard of Brown Side? Yeah, he's like, I got some homies over there, man. Like, uh, if you want, I could shoot them your shit. 
You know what I mean? You know, I don't know what's gonna happen with it, but it couldn't hurt. I was like, hey, homie, you know what I mean? More power to you, dog. Like, fuck, I appreciate that shit. Thank you so much. Hell yeah, shoot it that way. Just the fact that they would even listen to my shit would just mean a lot. You know what I mean? So, uh, a couple days went by. Homeboy dropped me off. A couple days went by. And, uh, like I said, I got a call from the man with no face, Big Lou. And, uh, you know what I mean? He took me out. We, we sat down and, uh, we had a conversation. He asked me where I was at. You know what I mean? See, see where see, see, just just to see where my head was at and uh he was fucking with it man he was like and that's when they invited me out to the uh what was it the uh the uh the light it up video the the rich g rich g feature in toker and uh he hit me up he's like hey man we're all going out to rosarita i was so hesitant because i ain't hey, motherfucker like me I, you know I, mean? I don't speak spanish like that hey i get by with my little bilingual shit but hey i mean it was like damn mexico like all right let's roll fuck it so um, uh, we rode out there. I remember being in Tokus' presence for the first time, man. I remember being in Tokus' presence right when we got there. Parked the car, went into the garage, and Tokus was standing around with all the homies. It was all the brown side. I mean, Thravi, Danger, fucking everybody, Icon, everybody. He was in there talking to everybody. He was about to be on his way out. And, uh, he was like, uh, he was like, come meet the homies. Like, hey, this, this is the singer homie I was telling you about. I was like, Hey, Tokes, it's a pleasure to meet you, homie. Hey, dog, come on now. Don't even tell me that. It's, it's good to meet you, homie. We're going to sit down. We're going to chop it up. And uh, like I said, he ended up being busy that day. He ended up being, yeah, the next day, I mean, you know what I mean? But we got, to sat down, we got to sit down, and I showed him some music. He's like, you definitely need to come back. You definitely need to come back. And uh, it was that, that was, but that was the pause. Like, that was the pause after that. Like, because I had offers from just everybody, you know what I mean? Like, every fucking Chicano rapper, every, every, everybody in our type of genre that you can think of, down to the criminals, to the, to the cuetes, to the capones, to the, everybody, man. Like, everybody was offering me something, and it just, it came, like, it just started being a headache. Like, I didn't know who I could trust or, or who's really in it for my best interest. <clears throat> so, I remember walking home from the gym one day. I was walking home from the gym, and, uh. I get a call from Lou. I'm like, what's up, bro? He's like, you busy? I was like, nah. He's like, hold on. No talk, no talk, nothing. Hey, homie, I heard you don't like making money. I was like, what? Who's this? Ah, oh, come on, homie. I heard you don't like making money. I was like, is this fucking talks? He's like, damn, dog. I guess you don't like making money, huh? I'm over here trying to put you on, little homie. What the fuck you doing? Da 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 da. So, you know what I mean? He put me on blast. He made me, you know what I mean? I had never regretted backing away from a situation more than, you know what I mean, how comfortable they made me feel the first time when I went out there for the, uh, for the Rich G video. Like, they made me just feel like family, man. Like, and it's been like that from day one to this day. And uh, he said, I'm going to tell you what. We got this show on April 14th in Vegas. If you can make it out there, get out there, kill it, because I'm going to be watching. If you could kill it, Consider it a done deal. If you see it a done deal on your end, it's a done deal. I was like, all right, man, I'm going outside the whole time. I'm, I'm heading out to Vegas. I'm just going over my shit, going over my songs, my set list and everything. I'm the one that kicked off the show. I started off the whole show. And I remember when I got off stage, Big Lou was holding his phone. He was holding his phone like this. You know what I mean? It was on. He, hold it. he was holding his phone. I was like, what? And he handed it to me. And, and it, was, it was a message from Tokes. He's like, God damn, tell little homie he's on. And that's the fucking origin story, homie. It's been on ever since. He put, homeboy put me on, and the rest is history, man. It's a beautiful thing.